Legend says that when God finished creating the world, He had many things left. Lakes, mountains, rivers, desert, forests, a piece of the sky, and some ocean. He dropped all this on a corner of the planet, and thus, Chile was born. Located on the southwestern tip of South America, this long and thin strip of land is generous in natural resources and beautiful geography. Its inhabitants are hardworking, hospitable, and creative. Chile's 4,200 kilometers of surface enable it to contain a wide range of climates, temperatures, and vegetation. From the static vastness of the desert to the eternal ice blocks of Antarctica, along with the Mediterranean climate of the central zone with its capital, Santiago, the multicolored mirrors of the southern lakes region, its grandiose southernmost zone, and Chilean Antarctica. In the north, we find one of the largest and most arid deserts of the world. It is the Atacama Desert, which makes up the first, second, third, and fourth regions of Chile. The first three are known as Norte Grande and the fourth as Norte Chico. This desert contains minerals, nitrates, and age-old dunes. Climbing above 3,000 meters of altitude, a series of microclimates enable the existence of exotic valleys where scarce waters harbor birds, animals, and beautiful types of vegetation. Among others, Lake Chungara highlights due to its breathtaking beauty. It is there where the Diaguita and Aymara people live, using to this very day their traditional harvest methods and social relations. Analyses performed with the carbon-14 method have determined that the Chinchorro culture in Arica mummified its dead people long before the ancient Egyptians did. To this effect, they applied a curious technique, which included sand. The city of Arica offers beautiful beaches and a good hotel infrastructure. The Atacama Desert occasionally borders on the gardens of hotels located in dazzling oases of lush vegetation.
we recommend a visit to El Morro de Arica, a spot of great historical significance, and the Church of San Marco, built in 1876 at the workshops of Auguste Eiffel in Paris. Iquique is, without a doubt, the tourist capital of the Norte Grande. Its hotels are new and comfortable. Besides, it has a duty-free zone known as Sofri, where products from all over the world may be purchased at truly convenient prices. Iquique also exhibits important architectural monuments, such as the Palacio Astoreca, the Teatro Municipal, and others. These buildings reflect the wealth of the time when the extraction of saltpeter was a boom. These gigantic prehistoric works of art, with their mysterious shapes, are a sample of the human being's need to express himself. They are the so-called geoglyphos. Not far from Iquique is La Tirana, a sleepy village that wakes up every year to celebrate La Fiesta de la Tirana, gathering a large number of dance groups known as Chinos and Diabladas. During this traditional festivity of religious origin, these groups dance for several days to honor its lady, the Virgen del Carmen. Based on these traditions, the Mururua Tahiti Ballet will dedicate us a beautiful performance. Allow us to show you this beautiful fantasy based on the Diabladas of the Fiesta de la Tirana. These scenes were recorded live at the Balikai restaurant.
Great changes await the small and quiet city of Mejillones. In fact, its port is capable, due to its natural depth, to welcome the largest ships in the world. This is why a plan for the construction of a mega port has been approved, where products from northern Brazil, Argentina, and Bolivia will be concentrated. Mequillones also has a good infrastructure for tourism and beautiful beaches in the city itself. Antofagasta is also the modern and striving capital of Chile's second region. Antofagasta has shown a spectacular development thanks to the mining industry. Its shops are varied and prosperous. The city is equipped with modern and elegant hotels to welcome tourists. We also find residential neighborhoods, beautiful boulevards and avenues. Downtown Square has a quiet and provincial aspect, which is a true contrast to the busy activities surrounding it. In these days, the commission preparing the bicentennial festivities of Chile's independence is preparing a very ambitious recovery plan for the city's beaches. In the second region, some of the most important copper extraction sites are located, such as Chuquicamata, El Abra, Escondida, Radomiro Tomic, and Saldivar. Without including the worth of all the deposits, their installations altogether represented an investment of over five billion dollars. These and other mining companies, which follow a policy of respect towards the environment, are of great importance for the development of the north of Chile and its people. Besides, other minerals have become increasingly important, such as gold, and Chile is currently the world's sixth most important exporter of this precious metal. Through the port of Antofagasta, these mining sites deliver their products all over the world. In fact, its citizens often highlight that Antofagasta is the main copper shipping port for the entire world. Next to the port is the Terminal Pesquero of Antofagasta, where one may buy or taste seafood products 
with freshness beyond any comparison. And some of its most enthusiastic customers are real experts in fresh fish. We won't forget the Portada de Antofagasta, a spectacular natural arc located on an island. This rocky formation is the city's trademark. In the pre-Andes area of Antofagasta is San Pedro de Atacama, a picturesque native village which has become an international tourist attraction in the last years. Its 18th century church is famous, built in very thick adobe and a curious system of beams tied with llama skin. This system is of native origin and found in a few other buildings in San Pedro. Along its streets, tourists from all around the world are cordially welcomed by the local people. The Museo Arqueológico has been famous since 1955, thanks to Father Lupecia's personal management and perseverance. This priest devoted a large part of his life to this task and passed away in 1975. The Universidad del Norte currently manages the museum. The handcraft fair is a good example of regional handcraft. Apart from tourism and thanks to a large supply of water, local people focus on agriculture and livestock. San Pedro de Atacama provides hotels and lodging for every taste and budget. Close by is the Moon Valley, with its impressive rock formations vividly resembling the moon's landscape. The geysers of El Tatillo are also worth visiting. The tours depart from San Pedro de Atacama early in the morning. The experience is unforgettable. It is nature's power roughly exposed. The fact that San Pedro de Atacama is an internationally known tourist attraction 
does not prevent us from getting to know other towns in this area. For example, Chiu Chiu is a charming village inhabited by a peaceful community of farmers. Its church, dating back to 1670, was the most important missionary center of this area. Chiu Chiu offers lodging and meals for travelers. Caspana is also a lively sample of the Atacama lifestyle. In a small valley, these hard-working people have optimized the water from a stream to work their traditional planting of crops using terraces. Caspana produces garlic, onions, and apricots. The Church of San Lucas goes back in time before the year 1640. From time to time, eerie visions come forth to meet visitors. They are ghost towns that were once prosperous saltpeter mines. These saltpeter sites had playhouses where famous acting companies and artists of those times performed only for them, never reaching Santiago or Valparaíso. Next to these towns, we find the cemeteries. Even today, the descendants of those vigorous miners come to keep their graves decorated in their memory. In this land without water, flowers are replaced by different elements that are emotionally moving and provide the few touches of color found in the desert. Tal Tal was an important town and still contains examples of early 20th century architecture when large amounts of natural nitrate were shipped from its ports. Just where the Atacama Desert ends, in the third region near Copiapó, a miraculous transformation has taken place. The aridness has yielded to man's drive. In fact, hundreds of hectares of desert have become vineyards, watered by the drop-to-drop -drop system, and whose fruits may be found in countries worldwide. A few drops of rain fall every two or three years on this zone. A few moments later, and staring at the ground, we see a few traces of vegetation. We then witness the miracle, the desert in bloom. Dozens of tiny flowers show their countenance to the spring sun after having slept for perhaps several years. The sky of the north is so clean and clear that important observatories of the world have installed their equipment and laboratories to observe beyond known stars and planets. New projects with even larger telescopes are under construction. A 
bit towards the south, the cities of La Serena and Coquimbo have seen their traditionally quiet and provincial pace of life intensely modified by the growth of tourism. This activity has created sustained progress for these cities. This region is also witnessing the outstanding development of its fishing and mining industries. La Serena has specially undergone an intense flourishing of its tourist activity. The city provides large, numerous and modern hotels, cabin rentals and many tourist attractions as well as a multiple variety of gastronomic and nightlife options. It is surprising to find a perfect replica of a Japanese garden in La Serena. This park was financed by a Japanese company and all its elements were brought from the Far East. Coquimbo is an important port growing under the protective shadow of the cross of the third millennium. From it, we may view the city, the port, and its unique relief. On the other side of the bay is La Serena, also an important fishing port. Along the Ocean Drive, there are several typical places which serve seafood and fish. The Church of Guayacan was specially trusted to the workshops of Auguste Eiffel in 1888. The city owes its particular architecture to English and American carpenters from 1860. Towards the end of the late 40s and early 50s, La Serena saw its physical aspect drastically changed. The country's president at the time, born here, ordered the construction of many public buildings and hotels. Their architectural style became known as neo-colonial and together with other real colonial monuments, gives the city a special charm. Towards the mountains, we find the Valle del Elqui, the heart of the Pisco zone, but above all, the birthplace and resting place of the poet woman, Gabriela Mistral, Nobel Prize literature winner in 1945. A museum honoring her is located in the enchanting town of Vicuña. This town has good accommodations to welcome visitors.
in Monte Grande, just as the woman poet expressed in her last will, is the spot where she decided to be buried. From it, one may view the area that saw her first childhood adventures. The Valle del Elqui is known as one of the most magnetic centers of the world. This has drawn many people to visit it in search of peace and balance. A bit towards the south, our visit bumps into a Polynesian vision of exotic characteristics. A bit towards the south, our visit bumps into a Polynesian vision of exotic characteristics. It is the Tikitano Tourist Complex, a group of cabins of Polynesian style built on a small peninsula. It is a wonderful spot, and it is said that its guests may enjoy the best French cuisine of the fourth region. From its windows, we have an excellent view of Las Tacas, undoubtedly the most exclusive tourist resort of the region. In this section of the road, Starting from La Serena towards the south, there are many tourist resorts that open their doors to travelers. About 60 kilometers from La Serena is Tongoy, a charming fishing village very much a fashionable resort until recently. Its beach is one of the most beautiful in Chile, and swimmers have the possibility of choosing between the Pacific Ocean's salt water and the sweet water of a stream flowing into the sea. From there, and on the other side of the bay, we may view Bahia Veledo, a modern tourist resort. Upon arriving to the exit leading to Ovalle, we find the Termas de Socos, famous for its cozy accommodations and healing waters. A short distance away, the road signs indicate the site of the Valle del Encanto National Monument, a spot where more than 30 petroglyphs are located. They are dated approximately 700 years before Christ, and the site is the most important pre-Hispanic location in the north of Chile. Almost in front, but looking towards the sea, is the surprising Fray Jorge National Park. At this point, we find the vegetation of a forest from Valdivia, with cinnamon trees, 
terebinth shrub and fern, which is a dramatic contrast with the aridness of the surrounding scenery. This phenomenon is possible thanks to the condensation of the coastal fog. Annual rainfall here is not more than 110 millimeters, but this coastal fog provides between 800 and 1,000 millimeters per year. At the end of El Norte Chico, from the south, and practically in the central zone, we find La Ligua Valley. The city by the same name is located at the entrance to the valley, and it is very well known in Chile for its textile and pastry industries. Towards the interior of the valley, taking advantage of its warm microclimate, we find large plantations of citric fruit, as well as of other varieties. It is worthwhile to make a stop and enjoy the abundance of their menus and the quality of their food. The Plaza de Petorca, town in which former President Manuel Montt was born, welcomes the happiness of students at noon. Petorca, thanks to its warm microclimate, is a center for the production of fruit for export. We hope that you have enjoyed this tour along the varied and fascinating spots and cities of the north of Chile. We have mentioned tourism mainly, but we have also shown you the inhabitants of our north as well as the products of this vast zone of Chile's geography. The north of Chile awaits your return. The north of Chile hopes you will visit it again. See you again soon. Come back very soon. <laughs>